good afternoon dear friends i am dr k ragunathan pillai retired professor from university college i would like to welcome all of you to this program i extend a very warm welcome to you see today we will deal with the communication skills all of you know what communication is all of you are communicating every day every moment the what and why of communication it is the art of conveying ideas it is the art of putting across ideas when somebody asks you your name and when you say that you are so and so it's a communication that is taking place in fact it can be anything from what is written on the t-shirt the ads on the t-shirt to the the speeches even the speeches of presidents and why communication is needed it is needed for physical and mental health you will have to communicate otherwise you will find it very miserable you will feel a kind of isolation you will feel depressed so it is essential for physical health it is essential for mental health and please remember that communication has a wider realm a wider meaning because you know the the reason for many of the troubles of the society perhaps it is the absence of communication absence of communication at home among friends in the society so it is very very important in our in the society of the present day and you know language is the medium for communication but remember there can be communication even without language if i show a signal a gesture i i ask somebody to just like a, a gesture like this he or she will definitely stand up if i ask them they will definitely sit down so there can be communication without language take the case of the animals they do communicate they take the case of a of the ants they are communicating whenever there is some danger they will communicate it the next moment the cat is communicating to the kitten so there can be communication without language but we are speaking about communication with the help of the medium of language and another thing also please remember whenever we speak of communication in this context we are referring to communication in english so we speak at length about the effective communication we have to make communication very effective it is true that we are all communicators how did we announce our arrival into this world the time when we were born i hope you will agree it was with a it was with a cry that's how we uh, with with a communication we have communicated to the world that we have come so we are all communicators but the question is whether we are good communicators or bad communicators undoubtedly we have to be you have to be good communicators 
for all practical purposes, even for the identity purposes, you have to be good communicators. I repeat, you have to be good communicators in your family, among your friends and in the society at large. See the troubles brewing at, the, at home, perhaps that may be because of the, uh, the absence of communication between father and children, father and mother. So, this has become a very serious issue. So, take it very seriously, what you have to do, be very good communicators and uh, uh, this comes under the soft skill, this is a soft skill, interpersonal communication, it is a soft skill, but it can be learned, a training can be given or you learn communication through trial and error method. You are attempting a communication or a, or a step at communication, if you find that there is some uh, disadvantage, there is some mistake, you will, uh, you will correct it, you make another attempt. So, uh, this, this way or this is the way you learn communication, you learn the art of communication. Again it continues, how to make communication effective? You have to be aware of the context in which you are communicating. You communicate to the context. If you are addressing a, a set of educated people, the way you communicate that, that is quite different from you, the way you address the less educated people. So, you have to understand the context you have to understand to whom you are or who you are addressing, this has to be taken into consideration. And second thing is, you should develop an empathy, you know what is empathy? Empathy is our ability to step into the shoes of somebody else, which means an ability to understand somebody else's difficulties, feelings. So, you have to understand the attitude, you have to understand the feelings of the hearer, then only you can be very effective communicator. And again the message, you cannot go about boot beating about the bush. You cannot be very elaborate in your communication, you have to be very precise, whatever you speak or the message has to be very clear, very clear. If somebody asks you what is your name, it must be whatever you say must be audible. Please remember these are things that are to be borne in mind while you uh, face an interview while you uh, address, uh, address somebody else and for whatever practical purpose, these things matter. So, uh, whatever you say must be audible, the hearer should hear what, whatever you are speaking. And another thing, the non-verbal communication, verbal is based on words non-verbal communication, referring to the tone of voice, the language of the body, all these things, the gestures. So, these are all gestures, these are all gestures or say, these are all gestures, these are all I should say the uh, non-verbal communication. So, non-verbal communication is complementary to uh, the uh, communication, complementary please note C O M P L E M E N T A R E, M E N T A R O E, complementary, not the other complementary, here it means it completes paraspara puragam, puragam it completes. So, uh, it should be 
uh, if I say if I go on saying uh, uh, standing like this uh, that becomes or the monotonous I should say. So, there should be uh, the gestures tone there should be tonal variation and also the gestures and the body language body has a language which is visible to the uh, to others if we are tired that will be very clear if we are very active that will also be very clear so the these things should to a, to a certain extent act as complementary these are some of the do's and don'ts in effective communication these are all things known to you you should have confidence you should have a very pleasant uh, tone of voice as far as possible the factual descriptions very precise matter of fact descriptions and also you should be very considerate should be very considerate consideration for others again we earlier uh, on an occasion we told about the the uh, kind of understanding the feelings and sentiments of others that capacity that should be there and these are some of the don'ts don't assume pretend that you know everything and so also in the especially in the conversations or in the communication among your friends don't accuse don't uh, bring in allegations don't say that you are so and so don't say like this so uh, don't accuse because whenever you accuse somebody there will be another finger pointing against you so uh, don't accuse others and use slangs and non standard accents you know uh, uh, several places may have their own so to say slangs language and usages used by a set of people that is what slang is so the slang if you are using the slang of trivandrum a trivandrumite going to i am there i am referring to malayalam a trivandrumite going to calicut kolikod uh, uh, if he says kurukku kurukinu vedana thane so that is totally different from the and a kolikod a person residing at kolikod coming and speaking about yesterday enike ee paniyum kore aayi poi this is very difficult to kara refers to the cough so this is uh, we find it very difficult to understand so as far as possible you have to avoid the slangs which are comprehensible only to a, a few and again these are some of the types of communications the oral or spoken communication there is a long list of the conversations the speeches lectures interviews discussions arguments debates the list goes on so in anything could be you can add to the list here in the case of english you have to be familiar with you have to be conversant with the uh, rules of pronunciation the rules of pronunciation this is a totally different situation from that of the mother tongue i i do have respect for the mother tongue malayalam and today you know the relevance of this day 21st uh, february international mother language day and uh, ma- international 
മദർ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഡേ ദിസ് വെനസ്ഡേ ട്വൻറ്റി ഫസ്റ്റ് ഫെബ്രുവരി ഫെബ്രുവരി ട്വൻറ്റി ഫസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് യു നോ മലയാളം ഹാസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൺ ബ്യൂട്ടി മലയാളം വെൻ വെൻ വി സേ ദ റൂൾസ് ഓഫ് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ ദ സ്കിൽസ് ഓഫ് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ആപ്ലിക്കബിൾ ടു എനി ലാംഗ്വേജ് എനി ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഇഫ് യു ഗോ ത്രൂ ദി ന്യൂസ് ഡെയിലി മാതൃ ഭൂമി സുഗത കുമാരി ഹാസ് റിട്ടൺ എൻ ആർട്ടിക്കിൾ വെർ ഷി സ്പീക്സ് അബൌട്ട് ദി ദി മാധുര്യം ഈണം താളം ഭാഷയുടെ മലയാള ഭാഷയുടെ മാധുര്യവും താളവും ഈണവും അത് ക്യാപ്ചർ ചെയ്യണം അത് നിലനിർത്തണം ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വെരി ട്രൂ ആൻഡ് മലയാളം ഹാസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൺ സോ ടു സേ ബ്യൂട്ടി സിമിലർ ഈസ് ദ കേസ് വിത്ത് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ആൻഡ് ദ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഹാസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൺ സോ ടു സേ യുണീക്ക് ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് മലയാളം ഹാസ് ഗോട്ട് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൺ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഹാസ് ഗോട്ട് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൺ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് and i am i was referring to the rules of pronunciation malayalam is pronounced as it is written whereas uh, you you write c o l o u r kolur or kolaur and you pronounce pronounce kala so many i am i am only suggesting one word so there exists a kind of discrepancy in what is written and what is pronounced this is the written communication uh see the in the examinations more focus will be on the written communication there are the letters formal and informal letters reports not taking not making pressy writing and the, uh, you cannot say which is more important oral communication or uh, written communication both are equally important but in the case of written communication it leaves a a permanent record unlike the oral communication in the spoken communication the next moment you can deny i have in said like that of course it's not possible nowadays but written it remains it is a record it remains forever so that is the second type of communication and third is the the visual non verbal communication see every each and every organ of our body speaks you know the uh, each and every organ speaks the controversy you know the controversy in bollywood the language of eyes or the meaning of a wink that is you know that you know that a wink has is creating problems or that's a talk of the town so the uh, 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 that particular organ speaks it has a language each and every organ of the body speaks that's why the public figures ministers they are very careful when they and they very they project a very clean figure in front of the public and so also uh, please remember that you have to wear a smile always once upon a time uh, you need only wear a smile success follows that has been elevated to the level of myth so uh, we can it we don't have uh, to spend anything at all always be very pleasant that is very ener- energizing and uh, uh, the appearance appearance merely means you have to be very uh, you have to keep up cleanliness and so also the voice modulation see when you see the visuals what is it that you notice two kinds of smile which one would you prefer 
the first one or the second one? Yes, first one. Yeah, very good. Because uh, you know, I too prefer the first one because you know, as the title tells you, a smile that reaches the eyes. You, when you smile, uh, you realize that you are smiling. Such kind of involvement is there. Uh, one that will make anybody or defenseless. The, the one can capture anybody. So, uh, the, the, the smile that reaches the eyes and uh, another chalk, these are all examples for the non-verbal communication. What about the first one? Which is the one you would recommend or are you for the two visuals are there? Second one, but personally speaking uh, the second one uh, also cannot be recommended. It is a, uh, a, a, a kind of imposing gesture. You cannot uh, point your finger against somebody. That is a kind of imposing gesture. Okay, that is your opinion. See the first uh, visual. Obviously, is the absence of confidence. Obviously, is the absence of confidence. And the second one, it is said, generally said, by an author that this is, this can be recommended. Uh, this is a very positive gesture, holding the hands like this. So the, 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 you cannot say this. These uh, opinions are final. This is only the suggestion of one particular author, the non-verbal advantage in a book, he speaks like that, he writes like that. So, I uh, ask you to be conversant with the first DC students are, first semester students are, are already familiar with the rules of pronunciation and phonetics. You have got to study phonetics. You, I hope you are all familiar with the phonetics. And the, even if it is not there in the syllabus, I would recommend you to study the phonetic script, it is quite easy. So, I told you about the, the mother tongue, mother tongue can in no way be ignored, but you have to be aware of the interferences of the mother tongue. So, I, I told you the language, each language has its own unique specialities, features, especially in the pronunciation. One features of one particular language should not interfere with the features of another language. I, I would like to suggest some of the uh, difficulties. Now, uh, you know the spelling of the word immediately. There are two M's, I M M E D I A T E L Y. So, uh, it is a an influence of the mother tongue that you double the consonant immediately often people say like that, but please remember there is no question of immediately, there is no question of rubber, it is only rubber, it is only uh, immediately. So, he is immensely rich, you cannot say like that. It is often pointed out as an influence of the mother tongue. So, also you know in English there are vowels and consonants, you know the vowels. In English phonetics there are vowels and consonants. If somebody asks you which are the vowels, uh, often it is said A, E, I, O, U. But remember in, in uh, phonetics or in pronunciation, the vowels are totally different. Uh, you know the vowels and consonants of Malayalam, which are the vowels and consonants of Malayalam? Vowels? A, ah, A, ah, good. A, ah, A, ah, E, E, A, ah, come on. A, ah, O, A, U, A. These are the vowels in Malayalam. 
What about the consonants? Kaikha, Gaikha, Nga, Ka, Cha, Ta, Ta, Pa. Please remember, more or less similar to this are the vowels and consonants in English. There is only a slight difference. I do not know whether you can see this. Uh, you know, more or less similar to Malayalam. Eat in words like eat, seat, e. So, more or less like e in Malayalam. E, sit, kit, e. So, it goes on. Uh, uh, you write e, e and it is pronounced as the script e is pronounced as a nest pest kept a the there are but different sounds in english for instance you try try to pronounce map how is it pronounced map h a t hat T H A T that there the vowel is a the vowel is map a so uh, the such sound is or uh, in, in no equivalent sound is there in Malayalam so also there is an inverted e inverted e you must be familiar with this and how is it pronounced how is it pronounced Come on, it is a. Uh, you are pronouncing a. Uh, I saw a boy. A vowel that appears in words like appear, adjust, abominable, appropriate. So it is a. Uh. If at all you want to write this particular vowel, you have to write Malayalam a, uh, and above that you put a sign like this it is a uh, that is not there in Malayalam. So, a uh, is not there in Malayalam. So, uh, you have to practice uttering that I know that uh, most of you are it is part of the syllabus now you have to write the phonetic script. So, this is only to uh, remind you. So, also the consonants there are certain consonants they are totally absent I am not saying totally absent, but uh, See for instance, W I T H, the pronunciation is with, with, the, the and the, the and the. And the consonants are more or less similar to Malayalam consonants, k, g, p, b, t, d, ch, j. It goes on like similar to ka, cha, da, ta, pa. So, you have to be very careful about the there will be uh, separate classes for phonetics. Uh, now, again we come to we are taking one component of the the spoken communication the conversations uh, from the exam point of view also uh, you are asked to write the dialogues or you, ha you will have to fill the exchanges. Uh, we would like to see the uh, the grammar of uh, dialogues uh, the, it is a meeting between two friends Akhil what a surprise I have not seen you for long where have you been Atul I was away in Ireland on an assignment I have been promoted as the project manager. Oh, that is fine. Wish you all the best. Please give me your phone number. If you analyze a dialogue like this, which are the types of sentences that figure here? First sentence is it is an exclamation, it is not so. The second one it is a statement we are not uh, uh, going to the the 
um, jargon or a, it's a statement for uh, for our understanding it is a statement and third is a question again another statement and last one it is a uh, so to say request so the exclamatory sentences are there statements are there requests are there so that exactly uh, is what we arrive at and we see a number of questions and could you please point out the speciality of the questions the questions that figure in the uh, in the conversations dialogues very simple questions what's your name where are you coming from why didn't you attend the class yesterday who is your best friend which subject do you like the most what do you wish to become could you arrive at a, a, gen, a general feature of the questions from this see there is a question word and immediately after that comes the auxiliary the helping verb that is the the pattern of the question now we come to a set of the very same questions they are no more questions now what happened you see nobody knows what your name is what is your name has changed to uh, or has been changed to nobody knows what your name is so also we know where you are coming from please tell me why you didn't attend the class i know who your best friend is write down which subject you like please explain what you wish to become the structural change that has occurred a clause a main clause is attached to these questions and the nature of the question changes and please remember uh, if you don't mind from the exam point of view these are all uh, so to say these are all questions that can be asked for correction if you say nobody knows what is your name uh, or we know where are you coming from so uh, i would like to like you to remember the nature of the questions and when a, a clause is added to that the change that uh, takes place and the the common appended questions that come in the conversations or dialogues the appended questions or question tag tag questions that also you are familiar with see you have to be very careful about the the appended questions that come in the dialogues uh, we met before yes certainly we have couple of years ago wasn't it yes i remember at the exhibition those are your books the question tag is those are your books ha huh. come on those are your books are in the are in the definitely are in the john has been looking for a job has in he it rains a lot ha huh. doesn't it john has a bad cold has in he he works hard doesn't he he worked hard didn't he question tag very simple very simple very simple so uh, uh, we are in a class like this we are uh, so to say referring to the formal dialogues because in the examination or in the in a very formal context you have to use formal language and uh, these are some of the questions that can be used or these are some of the informal questions you can uh, you can ask somebody finished yeah finished ready yeah in a minute
and uh, another speciality is that those who do not know any language at all they even they can ask this question coffee uh, no uh, uh, coffee or tea tea or coffee and the answer comes i would prefer a cup of tea I am very nervous. There is only one word, so a phrase, a word. They they can act as a, they can act as a, act instead of a sentence. Or they can be a, as good as a very good question. Why I am very nervous? Why? Because I have never done anything like this before. And the cause is because. in the conversational language especially in the informal situations we you need not say because need only say cause i am not uh, i have never done anything like this that's again uh, the peculiarity of the conversational language when you say i am going to school in the conversational language it becomes i am going to school even the two undergoes change to school to school thereby we come to know the the uh, we are familiar with the the weaker sounds the weak sounds strong sound again this is another feature so we have uh, tried to understand the we have tried to analyze the details of a dialogue uh, what are the components usually there will be statements questions and there may be omissions in the dialogues need only say hope you are well in in informal letters also hope you are okay the it is a, an omission and it is given in ita- italics i hope you are well want a drink the it is instead of the do you want a drink and hope you have spoken to the doctor yes i have so also will they lose the game to a question like that if it is said probably uh, the answer is a kind of expansion they will lose the game and a quest to a question like who told your father mary the completion is mary told my father and these are all uh, some of the uh, exercises that you can fill and uh, again uh, and i have uh, try to uh, give a if you can note down if there is time for that you can note down these are some of the uh, questions that you have to work out you are a customer trying to buy a or you remember please a customer trying to buy a color television uh, find out the customer service assistant if you can pay the price in equal monthly installments talk to him and take a decision and one more question is there you are applying for a driving license and uh, you are talking to an official at the office or the road transport authority you have been asked to uh, submit the proof of the date of birth find out whether you can submit a certificate from the principal instead of that today we examined the details of communication what exactly is communication Uh, why why should there be communication the significance of communication so also the three types of communication we have just examined the three types of communication the spoken written and the non verbal communication so also we try to analyze uh, the dialogues and uh, what all components are there for the dialogues uh, the 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 grammar of dialogues and uh, of course there are some exercises 
uh, the, the blanks to be filled up and also I gave you a question a kind of uh, exercise for you to do so you have to write as many dialogues conversations that will help you a lot and uh, in the coming classes we will deal with the the written communication so the first part of the uh, the module that's what we dealt with today of course there are three uh, portions for the module or in fact there are three modules and uh, uh, i'll be dealing with the the written communication in the coming classes and uh, if there are any suggestions feel fr free to contact me or tell me uh, we will uh, uh, we, this is not going to be a formal class uh, because the authorities also intend it to be a very uh, useful uh, program of helping you in attaining uh, linguistic competence, linguistic ability. Thank you.